Welcome to the Pathway of Hope Children's Ministries Program, where we, the children of Area 2, will share our experiences as families living during this COVID-19 pandemic as we consider our journey with God. Holy Father, thank you for the gift of family. Help, help us to be good. Amen. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for everyone. I hope everyone has a good day. And I hope the church family members can be safe. And the sick ones, please can you heal them. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping us safe from coronavirus. We thank you for keeping our parents safe in this community. Help us and guide us in all the things we do and help other families. And we thank you for the mercy you've given us and the peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At SBA Church, that prays a lot and sings lots of songs. We are going to pray now. Jesus, Heavenly Father, thank you for this family. Thank you for this church. Thank you for blessings. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for this house. Thank you for everything you give us and believe in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, powerful and wonderful Father God, thank you for your word which is life and health to my soul. I trust that you are working behind the scenes for my good. I will hide your word in my heart, knowing that it will be well with me because you are good and faithful. Today I set my heart and mind on you. I choose to trust you and know that you are working behind the scenes on my behalf. I stand strong on your word today, knowing that victory is on the way. I give you all the honour and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to do the praise and worship. Let's turn our hymn, hymnals to 205, Gleams of the Golden Morning.
337. Redeemed.
Hello, I'm Kid. I'm going to be reading Psalms 121. God, the help of those who seek him. A song of Asens. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and and even forevermore. Before COVID, I could give people hugs, and I could, I could, um, I could go to my friend's house if I wanted to, and and I didn't have to wear a face mask, and I didn't have to stay two meters apart. Since COVID, I I couldn't give people hugs, and I I had I had to wear a face mask and and I had to stay two meters apart and I couldn't go to my friend's house. What's been good about COVID is that I didn't have to go to school and I could sleep for as long as I wanted to and I could eat when I wanted to eat and I could wake up when I wanted to wake up. I don't like that you have to wear a face mask and I don't like they do lots of work while you're at home. And I'm going to talk briefly about how the coronavirus has affected me physically, mentally and socially. Physically this pandemic has affected my health by not being able to exercise as much as normal. Mentally I have lacked motivation to do anything. Even the easiest of tasks has become a challenge for me. As you know, all churches have been closed due to lockdown. This has prevented me from seeing friends and not being able to worship the way I used to. Socially, this pandemic has not really affected me because I am not much of a social person in the first place. However, I have missed seeing my friends. Thank you for listening. For me, the lockdown was a hard time mainly because I couldn't see my friends. And although I thought being off school would be like a dream, it turns out it wouldn't be as much fun as I thought it would be. And for once in my year to have a mind at the time, I actually missed school. To be honest, I thought that once I got used to not going to school, then that's when everything would be fine. But it never got normal how I wanted it to be. And I thought, when will this end? Because I just wanted to talk face to face with my friends. When the lockdown happened, I couldn't go to school and I would work from 8.30 to 2.30 in the afternoon. And sometimes I didn't want to do it. All I wanted to do was just sit around and watch TV when I could. But my mum kept me working. Even though I didn't like it, I had to do it if I was going to keep up in school. Before the lockdown happened, I had a lot of things to do in church. Every Sabbath, I helped out in the PA room, responsible for the projector and the lyrics that were put on the TV screen. I found that fun mainly because it felt like I was doing something important for the church. But because of the lockdown, I could no longer do it. During the lockdown, my mum introduced a fitness regime where I'd go outside for an hour every day and on some days, she would even log into a keep fit video for us to dance along with. We always ended up laughing on the floor because we knew it would take more than an hour to do the steps that they were doing. If we could spare the time, we would also go for a walk. And I was always complaining that my legs hurt just to get out of it. But in the end, I'd still go and, in, and I would enjoy it. What got me through lockdown was a schedule that my mum implemented 
so as to not to get lazy. Because she said that we are going to stick to the routine as if it was a normal school day. In worship, the devotionals were also what kept me through the lockdown, as they always seemed to be relevant to that day and our situation. After that, we would work until I could put off eating breakfast no, no longer, and then we would eat, go outside for half an hour, then go back to work for another two hours. After we finished working, we would rest, and then the day was mine. But my mum made me read for at least an hour before I watched TV. I think that if I didn't have that schedule to follow by, I probably wouldn't have wanted to work hard in school after I went back. For me, the Bible verse that helped me get through the lockdown was Psalms 46 verse 1 to 3. It tells us that God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. With God as our refuge, we need not fear. We will not fear, because even as the earth gives way and as the waters roar, our souls can find rest in God and in God alone. God is with us and we can be still when we face struggles and storms, and know that our God is God. That does not mean the storm will magically disappear. It means that God is with us and we need to not be afraid. It means we can take comfort in being in God's presence, trusting in the promise of eternal life means that the creator of the universe cares about our daily struggles and shares in them with us. Thank you for listening to my lockdown experience. COVID-19 has brought a startling experience in my life. Lockdown has kept us away from school where we miss learning in the first lockdown. Yes, we do enjoy spending time with our parents, but many children do not stay do not live with their parents because they are in care homes for special needs. A lot of frustration as my extended family is in India. I miss them as I am unable to visit them. Even I miss summer holiday trips where my parents always take me to different places. My mommy and daddy both care for patients and I feel bad for them, as well as they cannot maintain social distancing while caring for patients. As a Christian, I miss going to church and fellowship with them. I miss church camp, but I thank God that we are able to stay connected through Zoom. I thank God for this technology, and I also thank God that this lockdown is slowing down of many busy day to day to day life has allowed people to spend more time with their family together and also as God has wiped away the knowledge with medical help where mankind is fully dependent on the supernatural power this lockdown has also given people an opportunity to watch many sermons via Zoom and time to spend with God and read the Bible. I personally spend more time learning about God through various channels. We believe God is preparing us for a great trial which is yet not to come. Let us remain in faith and we will pray for the families who lost their loved ones or are um, in COVID-19 and the ones who are in it now and suffering from it. Let us pray that our church will open and will open soon. Let us pray for all the leaders in the North England Conference and our church pastors and church members. Let, let God bless us. Amen. Today I'm going to be reflecting on COVID-19 and the impact it has had on our lives. Well, the mask has become ubiquitous. Baths are handled only while wearing gloves and pockets and purses always carry hand sanitizers. Social gatherings, parties, marriages and religious functions are frowned upon and invitations turned down outright. Picnics, outings, sightseeing trips, tourism and travel for leisure all have become things of the past. We, as people, have changed 
and are no longer comfortable in crowds, at markets, weddings or other gatherings. Chairs and tables are sanitised after the visitor leaves. If someone coughs or sneezes, the whole office is in tenterhooks and the person is cursed. And if it happens in an elevator, there is a complete panic. All this is because of a virus, coronavirus, or known as COVID-19. This virus has drastically changed our lives. The way we used to think, act and behave then and now has significantly changed. Today, we're, today we take precaution measures before going out from our houses, while we used to be so busy working day and night, running here and running there. Taking life for granted, which has been shaken to ground due to the virus. These are uncertain times. The global pandemic caused by COVID has been transforming the lives of millions of people in an, unma in an unimaginable way for most of us. We are all battling with the global pandemic that has created a ripple around the world. There has been a huge difference in our lifestyle before COVID-19 and during before COVID-19 and during the pandemic. Being a school student can sometimes be challenging, but the COVID pandemic has made getting an education and life in general even more difficult for young people. When schools closed in March, lessons were being held remotely. All sports, school activities, extracurricular and events had been cancelled. Friendships and relationships had been transferred to live chat, live chats and video calls. However, it has been a blessing in disguise and taught us most and taught most of us a huge lesson to be sensible, responsible, humble, prayerful and wise before it is too late. We might not have even cared about our individual life. We were just working, searching for our happiness, chasing our dreams and whatnot. Now it has taught us to embrace and value what it is in front of us. Therefore, along with the newly announced modalities and chaos that is running in people's mind and life, another big question that hits us hard is how to get back to normal life as we're hearing about a vaccine and things, but we don't know for certain. People seem to be frustrated and worrying a lot more than before, and that's understandable and obvious too. What we need to understand is that no matter what the situation be, we have to fight and bounce back in life, being much stronger and bolder. But we know we can only do this through God's guidance. We're all finding different ways to cope through exercise, prayer, fundraising, games, reading books and our favourite activities and also participating in prayer meetings and Sabbath schools on Zoom. My attention was drawn to the life of Joseph, a hero of faith in the Bible. His life was suddenly thrown into turmoil one day and he didn't have any control of his circumstances. But still, we read in Genesis chapter 39 verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. And we observe that his master saw the Lord. And we observe that his master saw that the Lord was with him. Despite his circumstances, Joseph not only maintained a relationship with God, but he also tried to live according to his faith and God honored him. Even though we go through unprecedented times, unprecedented phases in our social and professional life, Let's continuously look up to him and allow God to work through us. The journey ahead can look tough and especially at times we might think, we might wonder and think whether we have the energy to keep going. We might feel worn out physically, mentally, emotionally and even spiritually. It's stressful. Our hearts might be crying out, where does my help come from? But we know my help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. So, as Christians, we know this already, but when we, we are faced with something big, daunting, and as scary as a global pandemic, we, had, we need to be reminded of things we know. That's one of the reasons why there are prayer sessions and devotions, and that's why they're so helpful. 
they remind us to keep the covenant keeping god who made everything who loves us so much we need to keep god first so we need to keep on encouraging each other when uncertainty and perhaps months of difficulty are lying ahead of us we need to first and foremost look to the lord every day thank you for listening One of the promises of God, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. This means you don't need to be afraid because God will always be there for you. Amen.
Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. One of the promises of God is Psalms 37 verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I will do my favourite Bible promise. Psalms 23, a song of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pasture. He leads me to calm water. He gives me new strength for the good of his name. He leads me on path on path that are right. Even if I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your words and your walking stick comforts me. You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You put oil on my head. You give me more than I can hold. Surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life. I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I'll be reading Jeremiah 29 verse 11. And Jeremiah 29 verse 11 is my favourite Bible promise. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you says the Lord, thought of peace and not evil, to give you a future and hope. My Bible promise is Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Thank you. Guys, guys, I have good news. I have good news. It's time to go home. It's time to go home. It's time to go home. Yes, it's time to go home. Right? So, uh, Pharaoh has resisted and he has seen all the plagues that have been happening. And finally, this is the night. This is the night. So, Take all your belongings, get all your stuff, get all your stuff, and it's time to get home. It's time to go. Right? Okay. He has decided that we can go now. You know what? Let's march towards the promised land. God is giving us a land. And I hope that Pharaoh doesn't change his mind. So do I. Right. It feels so good to be free. And wait, there's a sound coming. God is going to do for you. You see this Red Sea? And you see all Pharaoh and his army? You will see them no more. God is going to help us. Just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord today. Okay? And God is going to help us. So now, we are now going to cross. And don't worry, God is going to protect us. Right. So, let us march with in faith. Let's move over in faith. See this red sea? Go. There you go. See? Wow. Look. Right ground. Yeah. Right ground. Keep marching. Keep marching forward. Oh. Right. The Egyptians are coming back. Feeling thirsty. Feeling thirsty? Oh, oh yeah. water too. There's no water in this don't, desert. Don't, why, don't, why have you left us here? Why can't we just go back to Egypt? Don't worry. God will give us, will provide everything. And do you know something? Why would you want to go back to this? You know, 
You say you want to go back to Egypt? You want to go back to Egypt? Why you do, would you want to go back to any of these? Look at what you'll be going back to. These are the things that you would want to go back to. These are the things that you want to go back to. Why would anyone want go, to go any to go back? So guys, let's move forward. Let's keep marching and let's have faith because God will see us through. Yeah? Yeah? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the promised land. No more complaints. No more complaints. <laughs> oh, and we're home at last. We're home. Yeah. At last. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our faith has to be unstoppable. Unstoppable. Yes. Well done. with all the wonderful things you give us. Then we'd lift them up and give them back to you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for letting us wake up each morning right after our sleep. Can you please bless us in everything we do? Can we um, thank you for our families. Thank you for always being there for us, always protecting us. When we're sad, you help us be happy again. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for helping those in need. Can we can we please be part of that job too? Can we have your protection? Can thank you for our families, our life, our our health. That's what I say in the name I pray, Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the service today. We thank you for blessing us from this coronavirus, dear Lord. Please help the doctors, scientists and governors to have healing hands, dear Lord, and find a cure for coronavirus so that we may get together to worship you, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen.